All right, quick list. What do you need to build a barn to minimum in Florida? Well, number one, we got the Florida Building Code, Florida Statutes, Local Land Development Codes, Local Zoning, Local HOAs, Covenants, EPC, Health Department Permitting. What else? Flood Zone, FEMA. Yeah, all this stuff, right? It is not easy, okay? But guys like me, engineers like me, are required to design your plans in Florida and it's supposed to be easy for us, right? So quick question, um, do you have any problem permitting red iron barn dominiums in Florida? I do not. I have permitted a red iron barn dominium in I think approximately half of our counties in Florida in the last six years. Um, we've never had anybody kick back. We do have uh, subtle things from time to time that we talk about with building officials and inspectors in the field and we reconcile them because um, we understand I designed the building per code even though it's a hybrid structure, steel exterior with a wood envelope on the inside. Um, we understand all the concepts. Our plans are competent, constructible, etc. So that's important, right? Uh, so quick list, what do you need to go to permit? Well, first of all, you need a good set of construction plans, uh, signed sealed by a Florida PE, right? Not your metal building plans. Your metal building plans are also required, but they're considered not the engineer record plans, but the delegated engineer plans, right? So I'm the engineer record, someone else is a delegated engineer and they design the steel building no it is not the same person i don't work for metal building companies i used to i don't anymore i work for myself and i work for you so your engineer record should design your plans now does that mean a cad service can design your plans and some engineer you never meet signs and seals them technically yes it's not always appropriate and usually has problems associated with it and usually that engineer doesn't provide value to your plans by way of efficiencies and economy and foundation design, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. A good engineer like myself is supposed to design the foundations as efficient as possible to save you money, right? Not save money on the fees, so to speak, but save money on the total construction cost. That's what we're supposed to do. Um, what else do you need? You need a lot of grading plan. Most municipalities require a site plan. Some of them do allow you to hand sketch it, especially if you're on large acreage over five acres but most municipalities require a licensed engineer provide a lot grading plan with topographic information, trees, silt fences, stormwater management practices, a bunch of notes and stuff that are associated with the grading. Um, yeah, it's complicated. And that fee can range anywhere on the low end of like $600 to the high end of like $2,500. Um, you also need a health department permit associated with the septic and drain field. Um, every the health department is a state organization, state entity, and every local county has an office for the health department and all your septics and drain fields by way of local ordinances and stuff are permitted through the health department. Does the engineer do that? No. In Charlotte County and a couple other counties, there are specific design requirements for septics and drain fields, and it's customary that an engineer designs them in those areas, but it's not required by law per se, right? So when you hire a Vonti group, do I provide your septic design? No, I don't have to. I don't, I'm learning septic design for the future. It's probably part of my future, but I don't, I'm not required to do it, right? Um, but someone, the septic contractor namely, has to provide a health department permit with the associated sketch for the septic and drain field. The same septic and drain field does have to go back and show up on the lot grading plan designed by the engineer. So it is a coordination effort that is done by the engineer record, by the contractor sometimes, or the homeowner, whoever engages the septic contractor and the associated health department permit, right? What else? So you got building plans, you got a lot grading plan, you got a septic permit. Now you need energy and load calculations. Those are not necessarily done by your engineer. They can be done by a third party for cheap, but oftentimes the best practice is to engage the AC contractor that you're willing to work with that you already have a pre-qualified price on and engage them to provide your energy and load calculations for a couple of reasons. Number one, they should pass it through to you at a low cost or no cost because it's an added value service to what they're already doing for you, supplying your AC systems. And there's no disconnected information. If they do your energy and load calcs, it's gonna match the equipment that goes in the house. And oftentimes that's a problem and we don't want that problem. So it's in your best interest to hire the AC company and use their preferred vendor for the energy and load calculations. Let them coordinate all the information. And then what you get normally is no coordination issues in the field, right? So building plans, lot grading plan, septic permit, energy low calcs, 
What else do you need? Metal building plans. You need building systems plan signed sealed by an engineer for whatever your structure is. Pole barn, post frame, metal building, carport tube building, etc. You need signed and sealed documents. You need all these things to go to permit sufficiently. Sometimes, sometimes, not all the time, you can list the metal building plans as a deferred submittal. Most, some municipalities will allow that, some will not. That is up to the local authority having jurisdiction. Um, in most cases, in all cases, I list the metal building plans as deferred submittal in hopes that the local municipality will give the contractor some time to buy out that building and coordinate it later prior to first inspection. But that doesn't always happen and municipalities don't always feel comfortable with that. And that's their prerogative, so to speak, to do that. Um, so permitting is not simple. It does take a great set of engineer plans. It does take uh, a good contractor and team to put together all these things to get this custom home, by the way, to permit. Um, barn dominium or not, these are all the same requirements all over Florida, right? Couple other hot points real quick. Um, can a third party designer from out of state Florida design your home? The answer is yes to a point, right? Like the Barn Dominion Company, for example, Miss Stacy and Oliver, their company, uh, I've been talking to them on and off for a month now. Um, great design firm, very intelligent design firm. Um, do they des provide designs in Florida? Yes. Clients engage them, hire them, they design in Florida, but they're not a Florida PE. They don't have a Florida PE on staff. So can they design your floor plans, elevations, renderings, sections, et cetera? Yes, technically they can. And they're not required to be signed and sealed actually. But you need to add to that set of plans, an engineered set that has all the structural details associated with that building, including the foundation design, the wood framing, interior wall sections, exterior wall sections, et cetera, um, have to be signed and sealed by an engineer for the purposes of a permit set in the state of Florida. And so if you hire an out of, out of the state or out of country, third party designer, that's fine. You're still gonna need to hire an engineer like me to do the rest of it, to get you a qualified permit set for the state of Florida. Um, what else, can an architect design your home? Yes, an architect, a licensed architect can design your home in Florida. Again, under the same reasons, floor plans, elevations, all the fancy stuff. And we do see that from time to time, especially in um, luxury homes or larger homes or coastal homes where the thermal envelope and other details are very significant and important. We do see that from time to time. And that's, it's good. That's where architects bring an added value to this. They're, they're very, they're much, very much experts in high-end architecture, thermal envelope things, moisture intrusion, et cetera, things like that. Um, whereas I'm a more bricks and sticks kind of guy. I, I'm using proven concepts and proven details that work. I'm not an expert in coastal construction or thermal envelopes, et cetera. Um, so if an architect designs your home, you know, makes it look pretty, does all the intelligent design information, you're still gonna hire an engineer to do the structural design. It is what it is. Um, so that's Florida in a nutshell, eight minutes long. I wish I could make it quicker, but it's not. It is complicated to do what we do. Um, we're grateful to do what we do. Uh, if you guys have any more questions about designing homes in Florida and permitting them, please leave comments and I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can. God bless.